Hello Turfers, do you remember the breakdown of our weekday programming? If not, you can find it by clicking the card or the link in the description below. If you do remember, let's pick up where we left off. Weekend programming is quite different. It offers more variety than weekdays, allowing other networks the chance to join the lineup. After 7 months of research, we're ready to share a combined overview of the programming guide as if it were just one channel. Now Saturdays and Sundays have more diverse content but they also include a lot of downtime. It's similar to quantum computers. There's a lot of excitement and significant gaps. We're using the same data collection method as we did for the weekdays. The program with an average ranking which is close to 1.0 will take that time slot. However, we'll be flexible since weekends are unique. There will be more movie blocks and special entertainment shows in the afternoons and evenings. On weekend mornings, cartoons like Angry Birds and Bluey will take center stage. Some religious programs will be included, which may not appeal to everyone. And the weekday news show, week 24 Horas, will also be available on weekends. But, what can you show the details then? As I reveal the comprehensive results of these intricate programs throughout the typical Saturday and Sunday, please subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of new content. Let's start our Saturday morning lineup with Kapwa Ko Mahal Ko, the longest running public service program since 1975, airing at 5 a.m. After that, we got Agripreneur, which is produced by a company founded by Jiggy Michael Nikat's wife at 5.30, followed by the health show Pinoy MD at 6 a.m., hosted by Connie Season and Medical Specialist. At 7 a.m., tune in for Turbo Zone for Cart and Twinkest. Then at 7.30 a.m., it's Healing the Link with Dr. Edinel Calvario, a naturopathic doctor, not a licensed medical professional, who has been on various channels. Despite the objections, it's a hit for the elderly audience. From 8 to 9.30 a.m., enjoy the cartoon box starting with Piggy Tales, a spin-off of the Angry Birds franchise, followed by an hour of Bluey, the beloved Australian animated series. At 9.30 a.m., we have PTV's Mag Agri Tayo, an informational show older than the most popular logo draw, running for an hour. At 10.30 a.m., we have GME's Serap Diva, a cooking talk show hosted by the Villaruel Legacy family. This was previously hosted by Regine Velasquez. Finally, at 11 a.m., Pera Paraan with Susan Enriquez offers practical tips on money management in this new post-pandemic period. So, there you have it. The Saturday morning lineup is a mix of public service, health, cartoons, cooking, and financial advice. It's like the weekly features of a newspaper. Uh, remember it's showtime and abot kamay na mga harap ng mga weekly reimagination? They'll be part of the Sunday afternoon schedule. You might expect GMA's public affairs shows to follow these two, but recently they've turned into more risque, SPG rated streaming style movies. This has been a trend for about 10 years. Honestly, many people would rather have a different movie block, something more family friendly as one of my friends prefer. If there's a sports event at the time, I'm fine with that too. Just as long as it wraps up by 5.30 p.m. for Bente Cuatro Horas Weekend. And after Bente Cuatro Horas Weekend, Top 5 Cuento ni Mark Logan will bring some Saturday Night Humor. Now some people thought Pepito Manolo should take its place due to longevity, but my grid is set to run in 30 minute segments starting on the hour or half hour. Next up is Wow Mali, Doble Letama, hosted by Wally Bayola and Jose Manalo. As of now, this popular gag show on Channel 5 since ABC Days in 1996, which was previously hosted by Joey De Leon, currently airs from 10.30 to 11.30 p.m. Following that is Magpakailan Man, a leading weekly drama anthology. A former Canadian editor, known for reading letters and guessing the title to win a cash prize or cell phone loan, stopped producing new episodes in December 2022 after 31 years, following a loss of franchises for their home network two years before. Madame PK's format is unique. Tita Mel interviews the person, and they don't ask you what episode title is called. After that, there was a chance for Open 24-7, but it ended last May. Currently, that time slot belongs to Daikayo no Lolko. Thus, I have no choice but to keep that. Next, there's another Open Entertainment slot, followed by Oras ng Himala as the final program. Side note, the Pinoy Big Brother Eviction Night can be aired but it has to be live as it is as the content and production company demands it. Personally, I chose not to include it in this video because PVB has been underwhelmed lately. 
be wrapped up at 1.15 a.m. before starting a new broadcast day. This makes me think of a friend, or perhaps all of us, who is stuck in the past. Even though he's been in the U.S. for 8 years now, he keeps updated on this through many media connections. He believes Sundays are the most important day of the week of watching TV, like it's still the 90s. This is also when entertainment specials are aired until the end of 2010s. But really, it's 2024. Nowadays, streaming is everything. You can watch anything anytime without worrying about cable TV fees or outdated censorship policies from the industry as a whole, the MTRCB, and society in general. But anyway, I can't help but wonder, what if they put all those Sunday shows together on one big channel? That would be interesting, right? We came up Sunday morning with the key of David with Gerald Flurry at 5 a.m. I'll show you my proposal from PTE back in the 2010s. At 5.30, we had a dub Belgian fantasy Game Keepers. Typically, TV5 Sunday ma TV match from Veritas 846 would follow. However, it won't fit in. You just can't ask Veritas to adjust the programs. The classic 70s Japanese robot series Dynamos related to World of Five was originally set for 7 a.m., but this has been rescheduled to 6.30 a.m., right in the middle of their supposed program. However, there's not much choice. The 6 a.m. slot will now feature Angry Bird Stella, which is connected to the Saturday's Piggy Tales. At 7.30, we have Gabby's Dollhouse, a preschool series from Netflix produced by DreamWorks, and then Jackie Chan Adventures at 8 a.m. At 8.30, GMA presents educational shows like Aha and Born to be Wild, with Bluey from Saturday in between. In the English-speaking countries, Sunday mornings often include serious political talk shows. But this does not work in the Philippines due to the challenging and incorrigible political environment. Instead, the last two hours of the morning are reserved for a family movie or an entertainment special, preferably a pageant if the coronation night took place the night before. So in summary, the Sunday morning TV lineup would feature a variety of religious programs, cartoons, educational shows, and a family moving block or an entertainment special. ASAP, the long-running weekly musical variety show that should have concluded by now is on at noon. After that, you might expect a movie, right? Nope, it's another music show called Letters and Music from Net25. Now having two music shows back to back is a bit unusual, similar to airing Pinoy MD earlier. If no similar adjacent programming rule is in effect, they might replace it with a dull ASEAN documentary, which is from PDV. I'll just allow you to have an opinion on that. Typically, Sunday afternoons are reserved for sports as with PBA. If there isn't a game scheduled, they might show a movie or some specials like monthly documentaries featuring Boya Bunda or Otto Marolio or concert special feeding linear TV premieres. Then at 5.30pm, it will be 24 Horas Weekend. After 24 Horas Weekend, tv Fab's Kapatid Mo Idol Rafi Tuvo will follow. However, the rest of the Sunday schedule is quite complex with one program that is not negotiable. My original reimagination plan, the shows What's Wrong with Secretary Kim and Running My Philippines, won their assigned slots. But when looking at their actual broadcast schedule, both shows were scheduled for both days of the weekend. If they aired in this new Sunday grid, they would be aired twice as long as in the real life timeline. The nomination night of PBB could have been a good fit, but it cannot be included due to irreconcilable difference. They need to be included. We cannot do that anymore. Let's move on. Kapuso Mo Jessica Soho has been on there for nearly 20 years. For many viewers, this show now signals that it's time to wind down and get ready for bed before the next day's work or school week. Therefore, KMJS is the non-negotiable part of the schedule. In the original reimagination plan, American Idol season 22 which aired on TV5 and Running Man Philippines were supposed to follow. But instead, this time slot will be used for an ABC Entertainment Special, ABC being awards, beauty pageants, or concerts. It can also be a movie block or a special documentary. Finally, before the broadcast week wraps up, the CCF's worship service will air as the last program of the typical Sunday broadcast day and of the broadcast week. The Sunday broadcast day will conclude at 1.05 a.m. On the weekends, the variety program gives original shows on TV5 and EDB a chance to compete. Net25 is still looking for its breakout show. While Letters and Music found success on Sunday afternoons, it feels out of place after the lively atmosphere of ASAP. 
Wooden dance are almost became popular, especially since TV5 movies plucked didn't perform more than in, in the interest rankings. Not TV ratings, huh? But GMA quickly took over the Saturday late morning slot with Vera Palan. IBC 13, a government-owned station, is struggling. We've not seen them for a long time. Since January, they consistently lacked consistently ranked last in viewer interest among seven participating channels, finishing last 20 out of 37 times, or 50% of the time. Their shows are uninteresting, they struggle with promotion and lack audience appeal. Additionally, they have technical issues and don't connect with what viewers want. For one, many people are tired of constant praise for the president and the news that only supports him while ignoring the challenges faced by the public every day. For airing alternate programming on weekends, the best times are on Saturdays, 7 to 8.30 a.m., 8.30 p.m., and around 11.30 p.m. On Sundays, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m., 8 to 9 a.m., or after 11 p.m. These time slots generally attract the most viewers. Worst times to air? It's best to avoid all alternate shows during these times. Saturdays, in the early morning, 5 a.m. and 6.30 a.m., Late morning, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Afternoon at 4 p.m. and evening at 7.30 p.m. On Sundays, early morning, 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. Afternoon, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. And on the evening, 8.30 p.m. and at midnight. The project spreadsheet which contains the clarity of our alternate programming preferences is linked in the description. Now, feel free to share your thoughts about the reimagined composite journalist TV schedule in the comments. You can also check out the random video on the left and the playlist on the right. Until then, see you next time.